we are collaborating with the D8 Secretariat to have the first meeting of think tanks in the D8 countries. A little bit on the background, because uh, when the Secretary General visited Pakistan a few months ago, we had a meeting and we decided that uh, it was his initiative that we should have a meeting of think tanks in the various D8 countries to look at the various challenges which are facing the D8 countries and how we can possibly collaborate to move forward. Well, um, what I plan to do is give a little introduction and then uh, the Secretary General will give his inaugural address. And after that, I would request all the think tanks in alphabetical order from the countries which they are to make very short presentations about themselves, about three to four minutes. And then we can have an open discussion as to how to take this initiative forward. So as you all know that the D8 basically is a group of countries which has eight countries in it and the combined population is over 1.2 billion. Our total nominal GDP is around $4.9 billion and that is the figure of 2023 which I have. The objectives of the D8 or the developing aid is to improve member states' position in the global economy, diversify and create new opportunities in global trade, enhance participation in decision-making at the international level, and obviously to improve the standard of people in the developing countries and in the countries themselves. So what are the major challenges which we face? One are the, the economic disparities, we have different political systems. We do have limited resources. We have capacity issues. And we obviously have to deal with the influence of major and the regional powers in our neighborhood. Now, how can we make the D8 collaboration more effective? Well, we have to reduce trade barriers or work towards them, encourage investments, work to increase capacity building and skill development, improve the infrastructure or have infrastructure development, collaborate on uh, humanitarian issues like disaster relief, poverty, and food security, promote cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. And I think the most important thing is to improve the collaboration among the think tanks. Because think tanks in all countries have the ability to analyze their political systems, analyze their economy, and can make invaluable suggestions to the DH Secretariat to further collaborate and increase the capacity in all the countries. With these short remarks, I welcome you all once again. And it is my privilege to now request the Secretary General of D8 to address you all. Over to you, Mr. Secretary General. Ambassador. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Nadim Riaz, President of the uh, Institute of Regional uh, Studies, based in uh, Islamabad, in Pakistan, representative from the D8 member states, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. I want to join uh, Ambassador Nadim in welcoming all of you to this very important uh, meeting, which is holding uh, uh, is for the first time. Permit me to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to His Excellency Ambassador Nadim and his team for this wonderful collaboration with the DA Secretariat and the Institute of Regional Studies of uh, Islamabad. My appreciation also goes to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan for facilitating this meeting. This webinar between the DA Secretariat and the IRR is part of the efforts to collaborate with institutions of like minds in our member states to make the DA more functional. This virtual gathering provides a platform for experts from our member states to collaborate on critical issues concerning the future 
of our noble organization so that we can have a comprehensive understanding of our strength and areas that need improvement. Distinguished Pacific Fund, before delving further into today's topic, permit me to give a brief update on the D8 organization. As you are all aware, the organization was founded in 1997 by Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Malaysia, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Turkey. The D8 is an inter intergovernmental organization established primarily to promote economic and trade cooperation among the member states. Our priority areas of cooperation are agriculture and food security, trade industry, SME development, transportation, energy, and most importantly, tourism. In response to the new global challenges, the areas of cooperation with D, within D8 have been, have been expanded to include now health and social protection, education and human resource development, the ICT, and most recently, women economic empowerment, disaster management, and climate change issues. The following statistics of the organizations are very, very noteworthy. D8 member states, like, like you've heard from the from Ambassador Nadim, we have a combined population of over 1.1 billion people, which is a very huge market. This is the size of, of Africa. The group's GDP is about 4.5 trillion US dollars and accounts for almost 5% of the global GDP in 2022. The total trade volume of D8 member states is USD 1.6 trillion which entails almost 4.5% 4, 4 of total trade volume of the world trade. Distinguished participants, this is the trade is trade is the most important priority area of cooperation of the D8. For this purpose and to achieve greater economic in, uh, in, independence, the organization has established the following instrument of cooperation, which I think I should highlight and bring to the attention of this August gathering. We have established D8 Preferential Trade Agreement, which is called the D8 PTA, which was signed in 2006. We, have, we also have the D8 Agreement on Simplification of Visa Procedure, which was signed in 2001. We also have multilateral agreement among D8 countries on administrative assistance on custom matters, which was signed in 2006. These three instruments was, were established to promote trade and economic cooperation. To further promote trade and economic cooperation, we are also in, in the process of developing our own payment system to enable us to settle our trade balance and reduce the pressure on our foreign exchange reserves. For this purpose, we are partnering with some private companies in some of our member states to develop payment products such as D8 payment card, a D8 industrial economic zone, D8 creative economy and financial center. And finally, we are trying to establish our own D8 barter trading system. Distinguished participants, 26 years after its, after its establishment, the D8 organization is yet to record significant achievement in its core areas of activities, which is trade and economic cooperation. For instance, in the area of trade, more than a decade since the D8 PTA was signed, this instrument is yet to be fully implemented by all the member states. Our intra-trade volume among the member states remains very, very low and stood at a very low figure of about $145 billion as at last year, even though this is, a, this is an increment from what, where we were in 1997 when we recorded $79 billion, but the volume which we recorded last year is still very, very low compared to the size of our market. In the area of agriculture and food security, we are yet to achieve food sufficiency as evident in the aftermath of the Russian-Ukraine war, which resulted in food scarcity in most of our member states. Similarly, we are yet to reach the desired result in the area of transportation as connectivity among member countries remain a major challenge to our cooperation agenda. 
Also in the area of tourism, cooperation and people-to-people -people contact remain very, very low amongst our people. It is against this scenario that today's program was conceived to provide a platform for us to deliberate on the best way to reposition the D8 to achieve the objectives for which the organization was primarily established in 1997. Therefore, there's an urgent need for us to come up with ways to make our noble organization to be more relevant in today's fast challenging geopolitical landscape. Today's discussion will hopefully serve as a catalyst for informed decision-making and resourceful policy formulation. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I call upon participants attending this meeting today to leverage on their diverse perspectives and insights and engage in spirited deliberations to chart a clear path forward for our noble organization, which is indeed a rising intergovernmental institution in the global arena. Once again, I express my sincere gratitude to each and every one of you for honoring our invitation. I also commend the Institute of uh, Regional Studies in Islamabad for spearheading this initiative. For us at the, at the Secretariat, we would like to make this type of engagement a regular one. Therefore, it will be very much appreciated if another member state could deliver, could, could, could volunteer to host the next edition at their convenience. I look forward to a fruitful discussion and outcome that will emerge from this forum. I thank you all immensely for listening. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. It was, thank you, uh, thank, you thank you for your comments. And uh, well, now, as I as I said earlier, uh, we will proceed in the alphabetical order. And I would request my colleague from Bangladesh to make a short presentation on his think tank. Over to you, sir. Uh, do we have somebody from Bangladesh? Um, maybe they'll join later. So could we move to Egypt? Do we have a think tank from Egypt? Okay, then we move to Indonesia. We do have a participant from Indonesia. Can you hear me? Um, well, we, we will come back to the people as, as, as they join. Uh, so next, Iran is on the list. Do we have somebody from Iran? Yes, I'm here. Yes, please go ahead. Kindly introduce your organization. And it will be nice if you can take about three to four minutes. So then we know exactly what your organization does, what's the scope of your activities. So it will be very educational for us. Over to you, sir. Okay, first of all, in the name of God, uh, the compassionate, the merciful, thanks to uh, our brothers from Pakistan, uh, Pakistan Institute for Regional Studies, uh, uh, Secretary General, His Excellency, and uh, the other guys uh, and distinguished, uh, let's say, delegates from all uh, the eight member states. It's a pleasure uh, to attend this meeting. Uh, well, uh, talking just briefly about IPIS. IPIS stands for Institute of Political and International Studies. We are affiliated with Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Iran. And well, uh, um, uh, well, uh, maybe maybe some of you have been have been in our uh, let's say uh, institute. Well, uh, it's it's a big compound consisting of different departments, but. Uh, one, one department just uh, focused on uh, doing research on different fields. Uh, uh, we have got uh, some uh, geographical fields of uh, studies and well, uh, the studies uh, group that I'm uh, uh, heading that is on uh, uh, international legal and environmental issues. Uh, well, uh, we, are, we are mainly uh, focused on 
conducting some, let's say, research uh, with with our neighboring studies, with, with our neighboring states, and uh, some uh, prominent Iranian, uh, let's say, research uh, uh, researchers. Uh, the issue of climate change and the consequences of destructive consequences of, uh, let's say, uh, world, uh, let's say, problems coming from uh, uh, climate change.